Good afternoon, everyone, Superintendent. I want to thank you all for being here this afternoon, and it's a pleasure to be with so many people who are committed to ensuring that our kids right here have access to a quality education that they deserve, and one that offers a diverse set of programs and classes and extracurricular activities as well as a safe learning environment free of bullying. Before we get started today, I'd like to take a moment to recognize our state superintendent of the school, Dr. Mike Bartorano. Rano, okay. Members of, uh, I don't have to see any members of our state board, are you supposed to be here? Our secretary of the Department of Health and Human Resources, Karen Bowling. We have our law enforcement uh, with us today, and administrators and student advocates who have joined us from around the area. Bullying is a statewide problem that should be tackled from many fronts, and I'm proud that in West Virginia, we're working together to combat this issue and ensure that all of our students know the bright future that awaits them here in West Virginia. So I want to thank you all for coming here today, and we want to thank you for your continued commitment to this cause. No matter what our age or where we come from, I think it's safe to say that every person in this room has been affected by bullying one way or another, <clears throat> whether it's through personal experiences or hearing stories from our children, bullying is harmful and affects individuals and families all across West Virginia every day. The research shows that in 2013, more than 50% of our state's middle school students experienced bullying, and each year, thousands of West Virginia children, teens, and young adults are subjected to some form of physical, verbal, or emotional bullying. As a father and a former teacher, I know the significant impact these hateful words and actions can and often do have on our kids. They affect our students' ability to learn and to focus in the classroom, and they cause far too many kids to deal with unhealthy stress, anxiety, and insecurity. And it's time that we put a stop to bullying and work together to ensure that our kids have a safe place to learn and capitalize on their full potential. During my time as governor, I've worked hard to provide West Virginia students with access to a world-class education. And in addition to our bullying prevention efforts, we're working to increase opportunities for our kids to compete on a global scale. We've made progress strengthening our schools and expanding access to specialized programs for those in need. But we all know that there's more to be done. We must continue to raise awareness of the harmful effects bullying can have on our kids and spread the message in our schools and communities that bullying is never the answer or the solution to a problem. We must also continue our efforts to give our kids the knowledge and skills they need to be successful. And that includes making sure, Mr. Superintendent, that all students are receiving 180 days of instructional time now, nationwide, 29 states require 180-day school cycles, and 11 additional states require more than 180 days of instruction time. The kids may not like to hear that, <coughs> that's true. Yeah. Research shows that there's a strong correlation between the time that you spend in the classroom and student achievement. Regular attendance is critical to our students' success, both inside and outside the classroom, and instructional time as time that you can't afford to lose, especially when trying to get into college or one of our workforce training programs after high school. Over the last few years, too many of our state students have been missing far too many school days. And missing just one or two or three days of school a month can cause you to get very much behind in class and put you behind at a disadvantage among your other students. To combat this problem, we launched the Statewide Truancy Diversion Initiative as part of my comprehensive juvenile justice reform, which was passed earlier this year. Students can and often are truant for a number of underlying reasons, including family struggles, long-term illnesses, or bullying. And this initiative is designed with these factors in mind and will help county school systems provide early intervention services to kids who need them most keeping them in school and providing them with the individualized attention they need to get back on track and be successful. We have a number of programs in place to tell our kids that we do care about each and every one of them. 
Today, as we stand together to recognize National Bullying Prevention Month and Bullying, Aware Bullying Awareness Week in West Virginia, we're taking a step forward on the path toward ensuring that our kids are safe and happy and on their way to a successful future in West Virginia. And today, I thank all of you for joining us. At this time, I'd like to invite Tanya Barnett Huff, is Tanya here? Okay, to the podium to accept the proclamation. Tanya, I'm proud to proclaim the month of October as National Bully and Prevention Month and the week of October the 11th through the 17th, West Virginia, West Virginia Bully Awareness Week. So let's step out front here and we'll get a picture as we present the proclamation. Now, at this time, I would like to invite our state superintendent to say a few words, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, sir. Great to see you, Superintendent. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, give our great governor a round of applause one more time. <laughs> I am truly honored uh, to work with a governor who, in my estimation, gets it. You understand what I'm talking about when I say that to our young people. He gets it. He gets kids. He gets the importance of education. And during my time working with him, he's had many conversations with me about the importance of our educational system, as seen it for the, the viable path for your future, and understanding the importance of economic development in terms of the prosperity of our state. But also he's talked to me about the importance of taking care of our young people, not just in terms of academics, but making certain our young people are taken care of every day. So Governor, I applaud you for your efforts, and again, your acknowledgement of this very important topic. So I'm going to direct my comments to the boys and girls. So you see the governor and myself standing up here, and we're adults. But if I were to tell you that I was bullied as a child, would you believe me? I was. So let me just tell you a quick story. When I was growing up in the mountains of Western Maryland, not too far from the border of West Virginia, my grandfather, who was an Italian immigrant, came from the country called Italy. And he immigrated to the mountains of Western Maryland to be a coal miner. And he had 11 children, one of which was my father, and obviously lots of grandchildren. And I'm his namesake, Michael Joseph Mattidano, if there were correct way of saying it in Italian. But the, well, Governor, I didn't want to go too far with you on that. Governor says it perfect, by all means, he says it perfect. And when I was growing up, there were children who made fun of me because of my last name, because I was Italian. And it wasn't uncommon in that generation, whether you were from different countries, whether you were from Africa, whether you were from Ireland, whether you were from Poland, Italy, whatever country you were from, there were derogatory names called to individuals from those countries. Unfortunately, that was occurring. And I was called names that represented very negative names towards Italians. And I remember that vividly. I am a 55-year-old man, and I know that surprises many of you because you probably thought I was 29. But the bottom line is, as a 55-year-old man, I can still remember when I was bullied. I can tell you where I was as a child when I was called those very bad names, and when I was pushed because I was different in terms of a different name. And I'm very clear about the fact of the impact that several, many, many years ago that occurred to me, and now I'm still reflecting on that. We never want you to have that experience. Names hurt. Names hurt. Calling names and bullying has a great impact on our youth. It gets in the way in terms of the positive business of which we're trying to do every day. And we need to eradicate it. And I'm firmly concerned about individuals who say to me, and I'm sure to our governor, who said, it's a rite of passage. We've all been bullied. We've all been picked on. That's just the process of growing up. No, it's not. We want to make certain that you're equipped with information so that if you are bullied, you can say no. You can tell teachers. You can tell adults. Because it can lead to very bad things happening. And I use an expression which I talk about often young people suffering in silence. When I was a young person, and I may have been bullied, and if our governor was bullied as well, we could go to the safe confines of our house, and we didn't have to worry about receiving messages on our cell phone or our computer. 
But now what I'm concerned about, Governor, is the great increase of cyberbullying, of the concern that's happening online when people are saying bad things about each other. And it's just unbelievable how bad those, that information can be. And if we're not equipped to handle that, it can lead to really bad actions and bad things happening to kids. And I'm glad to be joined with our governor today to say that we need to put an end to this in our state. We are in a state, West Virginia, that values our people. We take care of each other. And we just need to say it's wrong. It's wrong when you pick on each other. It's wrong when you call each other names. It's wrong when you do that harassment that occurs and we all have a part. So to the young people here in the front row, if somebody's ever bullying you, I hope you have the courage to be able to intervene, to report it to a teacher or an adult, or just stay no. I learned a strategy once, and I'm gonna end with this, and I learned it from a child, and it's called a bug and a wish. And it basically says to stop a bully, to go up and say to them, you bug me because you're calling me a name, and I wish you would stop. It bugs me when you bully me, and I wish you would stop. So to our boys and girls and to all of our students in our state, we want to empower you to say it's wrong, and we, we hope and wish that it stops all across our state. And trust you, you have adults in leadership positions, our governor, who values the importance of the work that's occurring every day to prevent bad things from happening to you. Thank you very much, Governor, for allowing me to speak. Thank, Thank you, sir. As governor, I'm very fortunate to be able to work with some very fine people, and Dr. Matarano is one of them. He uh, uh, thinks about every day, that's his job, to think about how we're going to make our students the best that, we can, that they can be by giving them a world-class education around West Virginia. But also, he thinks about their well-being, and that's the reason he's here today. And the next speaker I'm going to call up is our Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Resources, who also has a, a tough job but making sure that our kids are safe and, and that they're taken care of all around West Virginia because some may not be as fortunate as others and uh, Karen is uh, one that uh, takes her job very seriously. She's very passionate about what she does. So help me welcome Karen Bowling, our Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Resources. <laughs> Well, thank you, Governor. Um, I also feel very fortunate to, to work for a governor who is so passionate about the health and well-being of children. Uh, you know, children and families are important to us, and what we do for those children and families is critical to the, really to the, to the state and what we do. And we have a great leader in Governor Tomlin and the superintendent and all the work that he's doing. And uh, I feel like it's a team effort, and we, we are focused on doing the right things by children. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some things I think you need to know. And that, that is about what bullying can do to you individually as a student and what parents need to know about the detrimental effects that bullying can have. When you look at what happens to a child that is bullied, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. One, it can cause depression. It can cause anxiety. It can cause sleep problems with children. Uh, it can cause school difficulties and learning, and it can actually cause loss of interest in activities that you might enjoy. So where you used to be involved in a soccer or you basketball or volleyball, whatever it might have been, children stop doing those things when they're bullied, and we don't want that to happen. The other thing that I think everyone needs to be aware of is the fact that between 1999 and 2013, Suicide was the leading cause of death among 10 to 18 year olds across our, our country. There were 7,600 of those deaths. 43 of those occurred in West Virginia. So if we think about suicide, we need to recognize that there are studies that say that victims of bullying are two to nine times more likely to be at risk of suicide. We have to make it stop. We have to all recognize that this is an awareness event that is critical to the state of West Virginia and to our children. And it can, be, it can occur anywhere at any time. As the superintendent pointed out, now there's no relief. Bullying just doesn't occur at school. It can also occur in social media. And so it's 24-7. There is no time that you have where you might be away from it, which is why we're seeing so many of these psychological problems occur with bullying. So as a public health official, we have to do something, and that is raise awareness. 
let kids and parents know what it is that they can do to stop bullying when it happens. And so one of the most important things is encourage you all to tell someone. So I'm going to tell a story too. Uh, and my story is really from one of my staff members. And a, a parent at their church shared this story. And I think it is so relative to what we're talking about today. Uh, their child, unbeknownst to them, had been bullied. Uh, he walked home every day from uh, the school bus stop uh, to his home because it was close. And every day they knocked his book bag, knocked his papers. Papers were flying everywhere. His parents said, oh my goodness, what's going on? He's feeling anxious. They wanted to actually take him to, to his pediatrician to try to figure out what's happened. He's very depressed. He stays in his room. He never told them he was bullied. Never felt like he could do that because he was afraid someone would think badly of him if he was being bullied. And so for months this went on. Then one day he was had his, all his papers knocked out from, un, uh, from his hands and he was very upset, getting ready to run home. And a, a teenager stepped out. He was at first afraid and he thought, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? And the teenager began picking up the papers. And he lined the papers up and he handed them back to him. And he said, wow, thank you for helping me. Why did you help me? And the teenager said to him, you're not alone. You're not alone. What does that mean? It happens way too often. He went home that day, and he told his parents what was happening, and he got the help he needed. But what happened? Someone stepped up and helped him, helped him, that could be one of you, or he was able to tell a parent, a teacher, or someone that it was happening to him so that we could help to work through what we needed to do to fix the problem that he was having. So we don't want that to happen in West Virginia. We have a great governor with great leadership who believes in protecting the health and well-being of our children. We are all going to work with you. We're going to make sure that this awareness is out there, that we know in the schools and we know from a public health perspective that we will protect the social and emotional well-being of our children, and we do that by the leadership of Governor Tallman. I thank you all for allowing me to be part of this today, Governor. Absolutely. Thank you. As the other two speakers have said, it's a problem. It's one that we don't tolerate, and uh, it's one that we need to bring attention to around the state uh, because bullying happens every place, and it's not a good thing. So, for all the children, if somebody is bullying you, don't be afraid to go to your teacher, your parents, to our police officers, and say, this is what's happening to me. It needs to stop. And uh, you know, with that, maybe we can spread the word and do what's right for all our kids because no child needs to be bullied in the state of West Virginia. Thank you all for coming today.